dear students i am dr garima shivastav from lal bahadur shastri college lucknow now uh, the topic for today is international human resource planning now we have already understood the, the linkage between human resource management and the organization structure of a uh, company in the international market now uh, when we have decided on the various organization structure in the organization that can be adapted in a global uh, environment by the company then we will be deciding on the human resource planning process for that uh, organization structure so we were having four kinds of structure the functional area uh, functional structure area structure geographical uh, area structure then uh, area structure and the matrix structure now whenever the company decides on any of these kinds of structure for uh, for the for the example we can say the matrix structure is the best one for the organization in the uh, global environment because it will give a combination of two or more dimensions that can be taken up in the organization structure so when we decide when the organization already decides to expand in the international market it will first of all decide on the organization structure the type of organization structure it will be adapting in the international market now once it has uh, done the decision making on the type of organization structure it is going to adapt it is important to fill in the people into that structure now uh, filling the people or keeping the people or hiring the people into that structure is called as human resource planning so human resource planning is the first step in the human resource management process it translates the organization's ob objectives and plans into the number of workers there that are needed to meet the ob organizational objectives now the basic objective of human resource plan is what it decides on the objectives of the organization and then uh, according to the objectives of the organization it decides it plans it initiates uh, that how many how many people will be required to meet those objectives the actual hrm process starts with the estimation of the number of number and kind of people who will be required uh, by the organization to fit into that organization structure now for this purpose we need to understand human resource planning process in detail so uh, over here uh, it has the following steps now very first point that comes into the uh, application is that analyzing of organizational objectives so if the of the objective of the organization is to expand in overseas market over there the of course the this objective will be uh, basing on the need to hire more and more people who are expert in the international aspects then again the company will be focusing on the types of products that they will be serving in the international market then who will be the people uh, who will be marketing this uh, product how the revenue will be generated uh, what uh, what at all if any kind of credits are required by the organization so all these objectives will lead to certain kind of planning for the organization so whenever we decide on the functions or the operations outside the uh, country over there we need to decide on number of people uh, who will be coming who will be coming to who will be hired to uh, perform these activities of the organization second is the manpower forecasting now manpower for forecasting means we will be forecasting the number of people the type of skill required the expertise that the experience sets that will be required to handle these particular operations in the uh, the country so uh, to uh, to perform these operations so as to fulfill the objectives of the organization we will be requiring certain number of people so deciding on these number of people is called manpower forecasting third one is analyzing human resource supply now of course once we have decided yes of course we need 10 people for our overseas uh, operations or we need 15 people we need 100 people for our overseas uh, operation now we will be finding the sources the resources from where we will be hiring these people now when we talk about the resources from where we will be hiring these people we have two kinds of resources the internal resource and the external resource now as the name suggests the internal resource means the people who are already there in the organization who can be transferred who can be promoted who can be uh, given growth in their career path they can be the people from the internal resources uh, who can move out overseas for the performance of other operations for the company now when we talk about external resources it means uh, the uh, people from outside the organization they can be from the talent pool they can be from the other organizations they can be freshers they can be the people who are already working in the same expertise area in the other companies so you have a certain uh, 
number of people outside the organization also who can come in and handle your operations in the overseas market. Now coming into the second uh, fourth point that is estimating human resource gaps. Now uh, what is the supply, how, how can we get, what is the pool of talent and uh, suppose we, we need 10 people, the forecasted people are 10, but from the pool we have only 8 people. So we have a gap of 2 people. Now this gap needs to be analyzed by the human resource. So that is why human resource management department continuously keeps adding on uh, talent pool, uh, they keep adding on the number of people into their uh, pool set, why? Because as and when they are needed, their skills are needed, their experience sets are needed, they can be picked up from within the organization, internally the organization or from the external sources of the organization and they can be placed at the right time, at the right place in the organization. Then comes action planning. Now if, we, if suppose we need 10 people and we have 10 or say suppose 12 or 15 people, what will be the action plan that you will be doing? We, whether you will be calling them, whether you will be interviewing them, you will be screening them, shortlisting them on certain as, uh, standards or aspects, all this will be done under the action planning or you can say the basic part of recruitment or selection will be done. Now uh, modifying the organizational plans. Now once you have placed, uh, found the people, hired the people, placed them at the right place, you need to modify the organizational plans according to the changing needs of the external environment. Say if, uh, suppose if only 8 people are required. Now how you will be uh, removing or how you will be reducing those 2 people who are extra in that particular ladder. So this will require, again require a modification of the organization structure and of course a certain kind of strategy which will not lead to any kind of dissatisfaction by removal of those people. Say suppose you are uh, short of some people, now some suppose you are short of 2 people, you have already found 8 people, you are short of 2 people, now you will be hiring them. Now what will be your organizational plan to hire them? Now you will be hiring them for the higher management or lower management or the middle level management. Then com comes the last point that is controlling and reviewing the process. Now this is the part, this is a process, this is a step in almost every kind of process that we follow in the organization. Why? Because controlling means evaluation of everything that we have done. So once the process of human resource planning completes, we need to control them, we need to evaluate this process so as to analyze all kinds of all kinds of problems, all kinds of uh, any, any kinds of gaps that they are there, any kinds of uh, uh, rectifications that are needed by the people next, uh, the next time this process will be repeated. Now when uh, we have decided on the human resource planning process, we need to understand uh, that when we move outside the national boundaries, uh, when we move, move into the overseas market, certain kind of approaches can be adapted by the organization uh, uh, when it comes to staffing. Why? Because when we uh, talk about international market, we have three kinds of people. We have parent country, uh, parent country nationals, we have host country nationals and we have third country nationals. Now we have, uh, what are parent country nationals? The people who belong to the parent country, who are the citizens of the parent country. Host country nationals are the citizens from where we are going to start our overseas business or where uh, the subsidiary is located. Then we have the third country nationals uh, is a, uh, is, are those people who are neither from the parent country, neither from the host country. So over here if we have three types of people for our overseas operation, we will be needing certain different kind of staffing approaches as compared to domestic market. Now when we compare it to the domestic market staffing, it will, it uh, domestic staffing is much more easier because people are, can be taken up from the domestic market for selling or buying or operational facility. Uh, fa uh, functions or you can say financial functions for the local market only. But when we talk about international market, the laws, the environment of the international market also comes into play. So staffing choices in the global company are more complex than understood. Issues of cost, cultural savvy, familiarity with local conditions, lo uh, language skills, family issues are there. Determine whether uh, employees will be sourced from one, uh, represent from most of the important decisions facing companies as they set up operations abroad. 
in general employees may come from any of the following sources they can come from the headquarter company parent company uh, country they can come from the host country or they can come from the third country now uh, we have the very first approach that is ethnocentric approach it involves staffing overseas positions with home country personnel that means the people from the home country the citizens of the home country will only move overseas and they will uh, perform all the operations for the organization in the overseas market so these people will be called expatriates and are usually assigned to fairly senior and technical positions in the overseas organization now uh, they are assigned uh, senior or technical positions because they are uh, well aware of the uh, you can say the environment of the organization the culture of the environment and of course they are aware of the various policies standards and procedures of the organization so that is why they are kept at the topmost positions in the organization for example of for example when a japanese company sets up an office in usa and sends a japanese executive from their headquarter in tokyo to staff the new office in chicago so this is a kind of ethnocentric staffing now it also has certain advantages they may be better able you may be better able to uh, communicate with the headquarter uh, and access the needed resources as and when required because you uh, the people you are sending outside you are uh, the people who are going in the overseas market they are from the home country itself they will be able to communicate with the parent company very easily and they will be able to uh, uh, allocate the resources in a very optimal manner but of course when when they are talking about allocation of resources these resources are limited to the home country resources so uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the utilization of resources of the international market this kind of uh, approach can be somewhat difficult so home country uh, may know these people well uh, from past collaboration and thus there are high levels of trust and confidence between the different uh, employees and the organization then uh, of course the familiarity of different standards policies are specifically there in the people who are moving from the parent country to the host country so they are well aware of all these policies of the organization they will be easily able to uh, uh, implement these policies in the international environment also so ethnocentric uh, staffing offers an additional benefit of building a global mindset among the home country workforce so we can uh, we can say that the home country workforce will be more and more uh, will become more and more expertized if they will be uh, moving out uh, for the overseas operations of the organization it also has certain disadvantages the very first point is it is very expensive kind of uh, approach why because the home country nationals they when they move outside the uh, outside their parent country they become the the compensation bec uh, package becomes more expensive sometimes uh, the family is also being sent out with them and then again additional expense comes over the company the home country employees is usually less familiar with local culture and employment conditions of that particular country and thus it becomes difficult for them to understand the cultural change that they face in the different countries then failure of a spouse or of the family to adapt to the local culture or di uh, differences also leads to uh, leads to the failure of the assignment that is being sent uh, that is being given to the employees then ethnocentric staffing practices are also sometimes criticized for preventing talent local employees for filling the positions uh, held by the expatriates then comes the second kind of approach that is polycentric approach it involves hiring local people to fill the needed overseas position for example a south african company setting up an office in brazil would hire brazilians to fill an open position now uh, this kind of uh, staffing this kind of approach is less expensive why because when we staff people from the local market when we staff people from the same country itself there is no cost of relocation of these people is uh, there so this kind of approach is less expensive for the uh, organization then uh, these local employees are often more familiar with the local culture local language so they will be able to give more productive forms to the organization as compared to the people who are coming to the uh, host country from the home country so we can say that polycentric approach can be done for the staffing of middle level management or the lower level management then disadvantages talent is often short in the host country 
so if we have lesser number of people who are coming to uh, work for the uh, for the organization at the middle level management or the, at the lower level management then we have a problem in polycentric approach then lack of familiarity with the home country uh, conditions cultures or language may become again a barrier for the people of that particular country to uh, coordinate with the activities of the home country parent country then the third kind of approach that is geocentric approach it involves staffing a location without regard of employees place of origin that means it will neither see that the person is from parent country or he is from uh, host country the organization just focuses on their uh, skills they just focus on their experience sets and fill in the vacant position of the organization so in this model a chinese company might fill a position in their mexico office with an employee for a from a united uh, from a <coughs> country like uk so it also has certain advantages geocentric model offers the most employment flexibility and choices for the company so company can find more and more people it it is open for more and more people it is not restricting itself to a particular set of uh, people from certain area or from certain country so the uh, there is a wide range of uh, talent pool uh, 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 applicable over there where the <coughs> company can take up them uh, take them up for the for uh, for the overseas operations then opportunities for cross culture development are also extended now over here cross culture development can also be brought in by the fact that the people can come from any of the country background but the thing is that they are skilled and experienced then additional global interaction is there more and more global interaction is there when it comes to people who come from various other countries to the host country or the home country to work for the cadre of globally savvy employees will experience uh, in multiple companies location can be powerful asset as the company continues to seek additional overseas opportunities so we can have a Uh, globally savvy employees over here so uh, we uh, we will be having a, a good set of talent pool within the organization when we when it comes to taking people from geocentric kind of approach now of course when we take geocentric approach it is uh, it also has certain disadvantages it can be expensive as ethnocentric staffing now um, similarly as we talked about expensiveness in the ethnocentric geocentric also has is also expensive because over here also relocation of people will be done from different other countries so when the people are moving from different other countries they will be uh, they will, there will be an expense that will be incurred by the organization from moving people from their own home country to the host country or the parent country now employees and families often will be relocated across the country borders uh, and long distances then geocentrically placed uh, employees may be unfamiliar with the local practices now this is the same problem as there was in the ethnocentric approach when uh, when we talked about ethnocentric approach uh, similarly in geocentric the people from different countries they though they are talented though they are experienced they are multitasking people but they may be again unfamiliar with the local practices <coughs> the last kind of approach that we have is regiocentric approach it involves staffing with a global region in this a korean company might fill a position in italy with spanish employee it moves uh, the uh, the basic advantages of regiocentric approach is it moves uh, it moves are often made over shorter distances as people are relocated now so of course when we take up this kind of approach the distance is uh, decreased and when the distance is decreased the uh, cost of relocation of people will be decreased so we can have a good set of people from nearby countries nearby locations along with decreasing of the cost of relocation of these people so this this kind of approach is somewhat helpful to the organization when we talk about it in the overseas market then culture and linguistic differences may also be less pronounced though these kind of differences will be there but they may be lesser in number now employees gain benefit from cross culture experience as they work outside their home country now uh, when the person from asia will be moving in asia itself 
he will be facing some kind of cultural difference. But this cross culture experience will not hinder his growth, neither his decision in the international market. So, over here it benefits a cross culture experience to that particular person. So, similarly, it also has certain disadvantages. Cost of, re, uh, cost of relocation often remains fairly high. Now, over here also, though relocation cost is lesser as compared to ethnocentric or geocentric kind of approach, but still there is certain kind of cost that is incurred when we relocate people within the same area or same region. So, while a cross culture perspective is built, truly global perspective is lacking. Now, of course, when we are taking people from the same regional area, the global perspective is lacking. So, we can say all these four kinds of approaches can be taken up in the different organizational structure to fill up the people in the organizational structure and uh, to uh, implement this kind of approach, we can take up a combination of these kinds of approaches like ethnocentric can be clubbed up with regiocentric or regiocentric can be clubbed up with your uh, geocentric kind of approach. No approach in its singular form can uh, make, can solve out the equations of organizational structure when we talk it in terms of international aspect. Now, uh, we can say uh, for effective global human resource uh, planning, we need to, uh, the organization needs to check into following aspects. The first one is break all the local uh, national glass ceilings. Now, this is a very common term when we talk about in uh, human resource management, why because local national glass ceilings, it means you have to uh, actually check on all the restraints that are there when we, uh, when we hire people from the local market or uh, parent country or when we hire people from the host market. So, we need to check that whenever hiring is done, all this hiring is done uh, irrespective of all the other factors that come into play when we talk about it in the international market. Trace your lifeline. Now, lifeline means trace those people who are important for your life, uh, for your organization structure and if you uh, see those key positions, see those important people in the organization structure uh, and who hire them from a very specific place, say suppose internal only then you will be able to set up a good and efficient organization structure for the overseas operation. So, it is important to understand what are our key positions or important job uh, positions in the organization structure that is being followed in the international market. Build a global database to know who and where your talent is. So, continuously work on building your database or talent pool so that you can take up the people uh, as and when they are required in your organization structure. Then construct the mobility pyramid. We have this mobility pyramid uh, on the right hand side you can see this mobility pyramid it will actually uh, tell you who are the people who are ready to move uh, to the uh, to work for overseas operations for your organization not every individual in the organization is always ever ready to move for the over, overseas uh, overseas operations so this pyramid will definitely help you find out those people keep the, uh, the database ready of those people who will be fitting into the organization structure of the global environment or global business so at the base we have uh, rooted lo local nationals who will never move outside their national boundaries. Then uh, mobile local nationals who will move within the national boundaries. Then regionals who will uh, who will accept short term or long term assignments which is there outside the uh, nation also, but they will be uh, willing to come back to their own nations. Then we have globals, they move around the world for medium term assignments that means they are also almost rooted in the uh, parent country, they, they uh, wish to move outside and then they just come back after the assignment is complete. Then we have at the top the globats or we can say expatriates who are frequently on the move uh, uh, tacking short and uh, long term assignments and these are actually those people who will work for you for the overseas assignments. So, you have to identify the global globats of your organization who are uh, available within the organization internally or who are there outside the organization that is externally. 
Now, uh, uh, once you have constructed this mobility pyramid, you will be able to identify who are your leadership capitals, who are the people who will be ready, who will be always uh, ready to take assignments for the overseas operations. Assess your bench strength and skill gap. Now, uh, for these people, you need to assess the strength of the people as well as the strength of the organization, so as to integrate what? Integrate the organizational and um, organizational and individual goals. Then you need to regu recruit regularly. You cannot keep key positions vacant, so you need to regulate. You need to recruit the people from these uh, pool of your pads regularly. Advertise your posts internally. Now, mostly uh, the organization should base their uh, hiring process from internal. Why? Because when uh, when we are moving outside in the international market, it is important to keep people at the higher positions who have who on whom the organization is more trusting or the who are more trustworthy for the organization. So, uh, the people internal to the organization are more trustworthy, you can say they are staying for the organization, they are staying uh, for, for a long time with the organization. So, we have to take, we should take the people from within the organization first of all. If the people are not available within the organization, then of course, we can move outside external environment to hire the people. Then organization of succession planning. Now, of course, succession planning means you need to promote, you need to give growth to the people. So, this can be easily done for by assigning them some of the overseas uh, operations uh, in the overseas market. Challenge and retain your talent. Now, after evaluation of all the process, after evaluation of the people the, who have already worked in the overseas environment, you need to check, you need to uh, check on the performance of these people. And if you find out that they have certain kind of talents, they have, you have certain kind of uh, key positioning people, the, people in within the organization. Now, human resource department needs to develop strategies to retain these people for a longer period of time. Because if they leave your organization, some of the key positions will become vacant. So, if the key positions will become vacant, it will be difficult for the organization to find them again from internal source or the external source for the organization, which may affect the business of the organization badly. So, over here, we can say that human resource planning process is a very uh, uh, key process or you can say it is a focused process within the organization. Why? Because we will be firing, uh, finding right people, right people means right set of skills, experience from within the organization or outside the organization, then we will be placing them in the organization structure that has been decided for the overseas operation. And then once they perform their responsibilities and duties, the success of the project or assignment of overseas operation is all dependent on these people itself. Thank you.